All right, welcome back to part three of our playthrough of Final Fantasy VI. And we pick up right where we left off in the town of South Figaro. Coming back out of that basement of the house of Duncan and his wife. We're going to go out of there. And essentially, if you remember back to part two, we uh, found out that there was a house up near Mount Colts and it talked about Sabin, who had been there previously, the brother of Edgar. So we're going to go up there and find him. Uh, before we go there, we're going to do a little bit more exploring in this town of Figaro because there are some things that we haven't really looked at yet fully. There are some hidden treasures that we can find before leaving, and there's actually a few that we're going to forget about, but we're going to get all the main ones here. So basically, when you're in this town, just remember to take a look in any barrel that you get a chance to see. There's probably going to be some sort of an item that you can find. And yes, you can buy these items at an item shop, but why bother spending the money when you can get them for free? So one that you find here is called Green Cherry, and Green Cherry is not something you're going to be using too much right now, but later in the game it may become useful. It's an item that will let you cure the Imp status effect, and you're going to see a lot more things coming around like Phoenix Downs, Tonics, Tinctures, Potions, etc. There's also a place to find quite a bit of extra hidden gold here, and you're going to see pretty soon up in this little room right here. So this is a section you're going to want to remember later in the game too, it will come much more handy. So here you go behind a hidden staircase, behind a bookshelf, go all the way down here, and you're going to find a few hidden uh, corridors basically, head over to the right, you got an empty room of no use for right now, that will be useful later in the game though. There's a save point if you need it, which we really don't right now. And over on the far right hand side is a room full of nice goodies, items, gold, extra stuff in here. There's a thousand GP we can use for buying items, weapons, armor, things like that. You got two empty chests, I always forget about these, open them anyway. And actually that one did have some gold, 1500, so that was kind of useful. Nothing really here, and you have two grandfather clocks that you would think had elixirs, right? But one of them just says that it's ticking. The other one is not ticking. So we can't do anything with those right now, but later in the game we will come back here and there will be a reason for doing this kind of stuff. So we're going to leave here, we're going to go out of this room, and we're going to go back up the steps, we're going to go out of the house, and we're going to continue on exploring the rest of Figaro before we continue onward and outward up into Mount Colts. Nothing really useful in this room here, just kind of check it out, two little kids playing around. And now we're going to go back down the staircase and leave this house, as I was saying, and continue on exploring the rest of this house here and the rest of the town. So continue on down. We could do some more exploring down here. There actually is some stuff in the crates down there. We're just going to forego it. It's nothing really useful at the moment. Now you could go back in here and there are some relics that are sold. If you're going to buy anything extra aside from the sprint shoes, I might recommend the goggles mainly because there is a boss fight coming up which inflicts the dark status ailment, so it may be useful to have one or two of those. Those relics are relatively inexpensive, so you could buy those if you really wanted to. It's not really necessary though, and you'll see why. Uh, don't forget to come back and get some of these extra hidden items if you really want to. Again, tonics aren't really that necessary, although they're nice to have, I suppose. All right, we're going to continue onward and outward into the open world, and you're going to see that we have some enemies that we're coming up against that are obviously gradually getting stronger to fight. They are no longer considered one-shots, although the auto crossbow and any hit-all items are very useful to have. So things like the hit-all fire spell, the auto crossbow, bio blast, definitely take advantage, make use of those because they will save you a lot of grief early on in this stage of the game. You're going to see a lot of leveling up, a lot of gold being earned, and if you happen to find that you need something that you couldn't get beforehand, don't feel ashamed to do any kind of power leveling here. There's no shame in doing that, going back and getting stronger if you need to. But we're in a pretty good spot right now, so we don't need to do that. We're going to continue into Mount Colts, and we're going to see, once again, we have some stronger enemies coming up. We get lucky to do a side attack here. We're going to take out some enemies very quickly, very easily, and really it's a lot of the same old thing. Incidentally, if you want to know how to do a hit-all attack, or basically a spell that targets all of your own party members, you just hit L or R or L and R at the same time, and that will target all of the enemies or all of your own teammates. So that's an easy way to conserve on MP if you don't want to target every person individually. So we're going to continue onward. Before we do that, though, there is a place you can go down if you really want to to check out. And just to kind of demonstrate, there's really nothing down here. 
Now there is a way to flee a battle. If you find yourself in a battle that you really don't want to take part in, you can just hold L and R until all of your party members flee, like we just demonstrated right here. Now you got to be careful with that because fleeing doesn't necessarily mean that all of your party members are going to leave at the exact same time. As you saw in that most recent fight, sometimes one will flee, two, three, not all of them. It's never a guarantee, so you got to be careful when you're doing a flee option. The only time it's really a guarantee is if you're doing a preemptive or a side attack when everybody has the initiative. Obviously, it's not really the case with a random battle like this, so there's really no sense in doing it unless you're very low on health. So we're going to take the fight to these enemies here, and that Tusker is really annoying, but we do take him down. And we're going to continue onward, and luckily we're gaining some items and we're gaining some levels here to make ourselves even stronger. We're going to continue on through this cave. You definitely want to take note of your health points because you don't want to be finding any characters dying because nobody has a life spell or life magic that they can utilize. So definitely take note of your health and your hit points. Okay, we do have a preemptive attack here, so we can choose to attack or flee. These guys aren't too difficult, so we will actually go ahead and try to fight them. Now we're going to demonstrate the Noise Blaster here. We've seen it before, but take note that some of these enemies here have particular magic spells that you really wouldn't see unless they were confused. So this one here, this Cockatrice basically of sorts, cast a spell called Break, which will essentially turn an enemy to stone. And that basically puts them out of commission and kills them. So when used against an enemy, it is considered an instant kill. Now you really wouldn't know what enemy has what spell, unless you played the game previously or you've looked at a book. So here we gain use of a tent. Now if you think back earlier in the game, we had a sleeping bag, which only <laughs> revitalized one single party member. With a tent, it revitalizes all party members, all health and all MP. So the more of those you have, the more useful it's going to be. They can definitely be used at save points to refill everything without wasting magic, MP, tinctures, that kind of stuff. We're going to keep on moving through, and at this point, nothing really complicated. Terra is getting a little bit low on health, so we're going to take note of that and hopefully refill some life at this point. And yes, we are. We're going to reorganize our stuff and just use a tonic. We don't want to go too crazy right now. We're going to continue on with the trek on up. Going on through the cave. Nothing too crazy here. Just a few more battles before we get out into the open. Another wide open fight with a very easy battle here. Fortunately, these battles here aren't too terribly difficult. Uh, now you do have Locke here, and again, as we all know, his main key skill here is theft and thievery. So. Some of these enemies have some pretty decent loot you can steal, mostly money, but occasionally you might be able to get a tonic or a healing item, so if you are finding yourself, if you do find yourself getting a little bit low on those things, stealing is not a bad option at all. Now you notice in the background, if you're paying close attention, there is a shadowy figure trying to run away from us, and considering who we are basically, we assume, chasing after, you can make a pretty good assumption that that might be Sabin, possibly? We've never met him yet, we don't know. Now, some of these enemies we got coming up here, again, we've seen before, uh, but again, you don't want to take them lightly. They can prove quite a nuisance if you don't take them seriously. Some of them, as we've seen, can actually cast the Break spell, turn you to stone, so you really got to be aware of that. If you don't have any soft spells or soft items, you're going to be in big time trouble. And here, we're just kind of doing more of the same, more, 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 more of the same, grinding and grinding all the way, and that's really all we're going to be seeing here. Trying to run away not a whole lot to speak of right now. A lot of the same old battles. Now there will be a section coming up right before we get to a little mini boss that you may want to consider actually running away from some of these fights because they, a lot of them, they cast the poison spell and yes you have Terra who has the ant dot <laughs> or the antidote spell on tow and she is able to cure that but again if you're constantly using her magic points then you're gonna find yourself in need of using tinctures and you're going to be up the creek, as they say, unless you have the items, in effect, to get rid of that stuff. Now, right about here, we are in the final section before we face the little mini-boss. And you're going to be facing the same trope of enemies that look exactly like this from here on in, for the most part. You're going to have a couple of flying enemies, a boar tusk, and the trillium, which casts poison if he hits you with his bane touch spell. So, obviously... This can be a high-risk, high-reward type of battle because you'll be fighting quite a few of them here. If you take them down, you're going to get a lot of gold, a lot of experience, and a lot of other good stuff. So, you know, take it as you will. 
it is not a bad thing or not a bad strategy to run away occasionally if you find yourself getting low on health, low on items. You gotta make sure you're in somewhat decent shape for when you get to the boss here. Now we haven't seen the boss that's coming up, we don't know really anything about him or who he could possibly be. Could it be Sabin? Is he a bad guy? <laughs> Something inside me tells me probably not, but again we really don't know what we're fighting up against here. So. Uh, just bear in mind, when you get to where you're going, make sure you are fully healed as much as you possibly can be. Try to have Terra's life and her magic fully healed as much as it possibly can be, because most likely you're going to be using her to cast offensive magic with fire, and I, <laughs> obviously you're going to be using her to cast the cure spell to heal you up. And here we can see we have a couple Trilliums here, and these are the kind of fights I really don't like fighting these guys, especially if you don't have poison curing antidotes here. If you're low on magic, this can be a big pain in the you-know-what. So as you can see, Locke getting hit with the poison spell, and basically what happens is, just to show you how it works, if you take a step or two, the screen will flash and pixelate to indicate that one of your characters is poisoned. The obvious way to cure it is to use an antidote and get rid of that status effect. Now if you choose to ignore it and keep on walking, what will happen is that the game will allow you, obviously, but eventually your character will drain himself all the way down to 1 HP, and obviously that means the next hit will kill them, so it is in your best interest to heal them as soon as you possibly can. Don't let it go all the way down that low, you never want a character to die if you can possibly help it. We have a few more difficult battles coming up here, and we find ourselves that <laughs> the Terra is in pretty bad shape right now. So again, it is not a bad strategy or idea to run away at this point. We're going to go ahead and use Kara's Ant Dot spell to cure some poison. Maybe use a tonic or a cure or two. So by the way, while we're talking about it here, maybe you've noticed this, maybe you haven't. But with the magic spells, it is possible to target indiv an individual, and it is also possible to target multiple players. If you're using cure spells on yourself, very simply highlight the character of choice and go ahead and use it. And again, if you want to highlight multiple characters, meaning all of them in your party, you just hit L or R to target them all. Just as a little reminder, because that will come in handy, you have to decide how to divvy up your magic. Now, it's useful, and it's also critical to know how that works, because if you're targeting one person versus three or four, they're going to get the better benefit of the spell. This person's named Vargas, he jumps off on top of us. Who are you? Well, clearly we know he's not Sabin. We find out that he was the shadowy figure. And Vargas is the boss we have run into here. Alright, so Vargas is uh, flanked by two Ipus, meaning bears, that we have to fight and take down first. You will not be able to target Vargas until you take down the two bears. And they're not too tough, they do take a little bit of punishment, but they're nothing that you can't handle, so just take them out with very hard-hitting spells, your auto crossbow, your fire, just hit them with everything you got. You can try stealing occasionally, you might find some gold or potions or tonics, uh, but obviously make sure you hit really hard, really fast, so you can get over to Vargas and take him down pretty quickly here. And we're just going to keep on hitting, 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 until we finally break through this bare wall of defense. And you pretty much seen everything that Vargas is capable of. His big hitting attack is what's called the Gale Cut, which will hit all enemies for pretty decent damage here. So generally what I like to do here is have Edgar and Locke hit with physical attacks and then use Terra to do the magic healing spells. If you find yourself getting low on you know, health and things like that, you can choose to move your characters into the back row, which is something we really haven't talked about yet but uh, that will be coming into effect later in this run through. Not so much right now, I don't really think it's necessary, but it is an option if you really want to do it. So here we're just hitting Vargas as hard as we possibly can. Once you get him to a certain level, he'll start to tease and taunt you, he says, come on. And that's when you pretty much know that, uh, okay, you're making some progress here. And we're gonna keep on hitting, hitting, hitting until eventually he will stop the fight and threaten to end it right there. And honestly, I think that's right about where we're at in the fight. Sure enough, there we are. Off with you now. And it looks like he's going to pretty much end this until... Oh, look at this. There's Saban. Finally comes in to our rescue, or at least we think. We've never actually fought with him yet before. And as we read the story, it looks like those two are people who train together. Vargas is the son of Duncan, essentially. It looks like Duncan was going to be the one he chose, but I guess they went with Sabin here. It looks
looks like we're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one duel to the death here. Vargas uses his mortal attack, blowing all of our current party members away except for Sabin, who survives. And now we get to finally control Sabin in a one-on-one -on -one duel to the death here against Vargas. So, as you can see, a lot of HP, an impossibly high level for this early in the game, but guess what? There is an easy glitch code. The easy win button. Pummel! Yes, Sabin has what are called blitz techniques. And our boss, Vargas, is vulnerable to the pummel blitz. The way you use them is very simple. You choose the blitz command, and then you input a certain key combination. And if you do it correctly, it will cause the blitz to work. The blitz techniques are some of the strongest in the entire game, and later on when you get some of the more advanced ones, they will be able to destroy enemies with relative ease. So for that one, pummel is very simple. Left, right, left, and A, and it'll take them down in one shot. As we can see here as we move on, the brothers are going to be having a little conversation. <laughs> Saban's got a bit of a sense of humor here. But eventually what's going to end up happening here is that Saban is going to agree to join the party. We knew it was going to happen at some point. So Saban will end up joining us. He'll come with us all the way to the Returner hideout. And we'll see what happens from that point forward. We have a nice little journey up there, and then we're going to have a little bit of story-driven dialogue. And we'll see where we go next in the story. And we pretty much determined that, yes, we know Saban's going to join us. It's just a matter of seconds here. So they come to the agreement. Duncan is going to be very happy about this, even though he's not really alive right now, obviously. So they finally come together. We're going to go ahead and pick up this final chest here. We get one more tent for the road, just in case we are running low on health, which you might be after a pretty critical fight here. We've got one last fight or two before we leave this cave, and it's not against anything we haven't seen before. Here's another blitz you can pull off, by the way, the Aura Bolt, which is basically a quarter circle from down to left, and then A, and that will release a lightning-based fireball attack. Very, very powerful. It can be used on many different enemies for high damage, and it's uh, going to be a bread-and-butter attack for Sabin for the majority of the next part of this game here. So get used to it until you get to a little bit later in the first half of the game. So we left the cave, we left Mount Colts, we're now heading north to what we believe is the Returner hideout, and some of these enemies are pretty much the same here, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but let's go ahead and utilize Sabin's new Blitz techniques, we're going to use his Aura Bolt, and let's see how hard this hits on the normal enemies here. Yeah, 329, that's some pretty decent damage for this early in the game, so you can't really complain, it's more than double what... <laughs> Edgar is doing with his auto crossbow, so you can see the enemies are getting a little tougher, but we're getting tougher as well with our attacks and with our teammates. And we continue to level up, we continue to gain gold and experience, and this is a very, very crucial, critical part of the time of the game to be gaining that, because you will be fighting some tougher enemies in the not too distant future here as we get to the Returner hideout. So enjoy this now, because it's not going to be this easy for very long. Going to take out some more of these base enemies here. No real point in trying to steal anything from these enemies. They really don't contain much except maybe a tonic or two, so... No sense in even trying it when you have Terra on tap and she can use the Cure spell. Now that Rhinotar just hit us with a lightning attack, the Mega Bolt, that nearly wiped us out. So that was pretty critical there. Thankfully, nothing that these enemies do should be able to one-shot you, as long as you're constantly staying on top of your health, which we normally do. And here we are, we're approaching the Returner hideout right about here. Right into another funny looking cave deal. We are officially in the Returner hideout, and we're going to be led to where we believe the leader of the Returners is, or at least the person we're meeting up with. So essentially this is an indoor cavern, indoor tavern. Before we go any further with where this person wants to take us, we're going to go south into an inn. And this is very critical. This is a free inn. It doesn't cost us anything. And obviously, you're probably kind of low on health after those previous boss battles with Vargas. So go ahead, take a moment to heal up. Again, doesn't cost you anything. And once you're good to go, we're going to leave, go back north, and we'll continue following the guy north. And we'll see where this takes us here. It's going to lead us into a new room with a new man down here. Go ahead and take the potion if you like. And we meet up with this gray-haired, yellow-cloaked dude who is named Bannon, or Bannon. I'm going to call him Bannon here. So basically, he is the leader of the resistance group, at least for now, as far as we can tell. 
And I'll just tell you up front that although you will be able to play with him for a short, very brief period in the next few moments or so, he is not a permanent character that you will be playing with for the duration of the game. It's just a very short period of time in the next few moments here, so just keep that in mind. He does have a nice special skill of health, which will come in handy here. But for the time being, let's just focus on the story. So basically, he's talking about, okay, it's kind of like the old story of Adam and Eve, right? You know, he ate the forbidden fruit and unleashed all the evils into the world, right? Well, this is the same kind of deal. So some random guy opened a box, released a whole bunch of evil, and there was one ray of light who Terra is portraying that ray of light right now. And we're going to see how this goes. Is Terra going to make up her mind to be good or evil? We'll just have to wait and see. So Terra takes a nap, and she wakes up to receive another Phoenix down. Basically, she's going to talk to all of her party members to try to get some advice on what to do. Obviously, <laughs> if you have common sense, you know what she's going to do here because she's one of the main protagonists in this game. So, we're just going to let her walk around. And you notice how right off the bat she's a little bit slower, right? That is because the sprint shoes were equipped to a different character, uh, Edgar, I believe. So, if you care about speed running or just playing fast in general, you want to remember that to keep all that stuff on Terra here. Now here we picked up a nice weapon, the Air Lancet. Uh, that is going to be useful for casting wind onto enemies here. We also pick up a nice relic called True Knight, which can be used to help defend players with lower health totals. So that might be useful for putting on a hero like Sabin or Edgar, somebody with a much higher health total. We're not going to worry too much about anything else right now, so we're not going to equip that on her, but we will keep moving on. And always remember to check all of the open crates and pots for any items that you may have missed here, because you never know when something nice is going to be in there. Usually it's a lot of you know small healing items or money, but you might find something useful in there from time to time. Alright, so I think we've talked to just about everybody here, with the exception of Edgar, who is up this ladder. And unfortunately, this moron NPC will not get out of the way. And he's going to make things extremely tedious and difficult for us, and I hate when NPCs do this. So we're just going to follow him all the way. Finally get past them. Alright, Edgar's way over here. And unfortunately, this is not dialogue that you can skip. You do have to read it. Although, if it's your first time playing the game, this is a very, very excellent story. So it's worth reading all of the dialogue that you come across. So we keep on moving on, moving on. And finally, we have the go-ahead to move out of the cave and talk with Bannon, who is outside here. And he's going to basically reaffirm and confirm that we do want to do this. And he's going to give us a little gift when we say yes to him. And let's see what that gift is. All right, Bannon, yes, we have made a decision. And we, the answer is yes. Now, oddly enough, if you say no, he'll say, I see. He'll send you back to the cave entrance, essentially. And you will not be able to continue with the game until you say yes. So it's like, what's the point of even giving me the option here? It's either yes or no. Clearly, it's going to be yes. All right, now he gives us another relic called Gauntlet, and Gauntlet is a very nice relic to use for attack power. Basically, whoever wields it, you're allowed to grip your weapon with two hands and essentially double or increase your attack power. The only trade-off is that you will not be able to hold a secondary item in your left hand, such as a shield. So you're basically dropping defense to increase your attack power. So keep that in mind if you decide to use this relic. Oftentimes, I choose not to use that relic, although if you're a gambler and you like high risk, high reward, that might be a good one for you. All right, so now we are learning a little bit more about the backstory here and the War of the Magi and what happened, and basically things are playing out all over again. And they are speculating that possibly what's happening right now is a direct tie-in to what happened with that ancient War of the Magi. And we are also seeing that there are those mech warrior robots that are done by Magitech. They are understanding that we need Terra's help to do this. Terra is aware of that, and she's confirming that she does want to help. Saban's being kind of ridiculous here. Alright, we get someone else coming to the party. And we can see it as a random soldier coming in the entrance of the cave. That's never a good sign. South Figaro, we were just there. And it has fallen to the Empire, and they are coming this way as we speak. So, logically, the party has no choice. If they want to stay ahead of the Empire, they're going to have to leave this cave and push onward and see what they can do. 
Now this game gets really fun, really interesting right about now. It gives you a little bit of leeway to split out and make choices according to the way you want to do them. So you saw there that Locke is going to be tasked with going back into South Figaro on a ninja sneaking mission by himself. So we're going to lose Locke for a little bit, but that's okay. And the rest of this, we're going to have the rest of the party going up to Narsh, which is way back where we started the game. They're going to make an attempt to return back to Narsh in a regrouping effort where they can uh, reform and re-strategize their plan. So they're going to move to the back of the cave, and they mentioned that there is a raft back there that they can jump into the late river. And things are going to get really interesting and definitely tougher than they've been in the past. We're doing a quick check here. And we're going to do some relic switching and relic adding here. We're going to give Sabin the true knight because that's very beneficial for him with high defense, high attack power. Eh, yeah, we're going to give him the gauntlet because he's definitely a high attacker. So that makes sense here. We're going to give Edgar the true knight. That'll give him a chance to defend people who are low on health, specifically Bannon. Bannon is key to this upcoming sector here. If he goes down... The entire game is over, and thus the run is over. Because remember, for this challenge, we cannot take a single death. The moment that we do, the challenge is over. All right, so here we go. The challenge is, for this part, we're getting onto the raft, and here it goes. It says we got to keep Bannon alive. So no matter what happens on this part of the journey, Bannon must stay alive. So we're going to take this raft up and about and around, up to Narsh, seemingly, and we'll see what happens here. We're going to have a lot of much more tricky, difficult battles here, so you're going to have to use everything that you've learned at your disposal here to take down these enemies. So you can see we're using the Aura Bolt Blitz, which is the toughest blitz that Saban has at his disposal. And even a full blast Aura Bolt wasn't enough to take down that, uh, that Pterodon, Pterodactyl there. So these enemies are definitely getting stronger. However, the trade-off is that we're getting a lot more gold than we used to get. Now you saw there that first straightaway, that first fork. Make sure you take the straight fork. If you choose one of the other two, you will continue around in a circle, and you'll have to remake that choice all over again. So make sure you do it right the first time, unless you're looking at power leveling. But honestly, I think there are better places to do it, since you can't really stop anywhere to you know, buy items and stuff like that. So make the right choice the first time. Now we will be coming up on a couple checkpoints here, so not all is lost. You will have chances to use sleeping bags and tents, and save points and things like that. So don't feel too bad if you make a mistake. We're gonna have a couple more tricky battles here with the Pterodons. Those blitz techniques, the auto crossbow, hit all attacks. Don't be afraid of using Terra's magic if you absolutely have to. Now, if you're gonna use Terra's magic, I would use her fire spell. Don't worry about using cure because Bannon has a health spell, so you only really need to have one cure, one healer. You can use the other three people in your party for attacking purposes. Honestly, I think if it were me, which it is, <laughs> I would use Terra for her basic attack power here. Try to conserve her magic for a little bit later on when you'll be facing some trickier enemies and even a boss in the upcoming section here. So we come to another section here and another tough enemy fight. Yeah, these ones aren't too bad actually. Occasionally some of these enemies might spit ink at you and try to make everything dark and force you to use a set of eye drops to cure that, which is kind of annoying. So, but again, at the same time, this is why I tell you to have at least three basic items in your inventory to prevent against this kind of stuff in case it does happen. One of those one-off scenarios. All right, now we go into a short little cave, cavern tunnel here, and we do get the chance to jump off and save. So again, if you need to, feel free. You also get a chance to cure yourself. Right here, we're checking Saban's Blitz skills, so you can see the two we've been using. There's also another one called Suplex, X, Y, Down, Up. We'll basically take anything, pick it high up into the air, drop it right on its head. It's a very amusing Blitz skill. It's also a very powerful one that we can actually utilize later in the game. And we come to another fork here. This is the second of the two forks. Make sure you choose left, just like we did right there. And then we will have, believe it or not, a little boss fight coming up here. And it's one of the more tricky and difficult ones if you don't prepare correctly, which I almost did in this run. Thankfully, I recalled way back to when I first played the game, there was something unique about this part of the game coming up, and I recalled exactly what it was. And we're going to discuss it here very shortly. We'll see exactly what it was. And honestly, even with making the preparation I'm about to tell you about, I nearly blew it anyway. So... Very, very critical that you pay attention to what we're about to show you here. 
Fortunately, our characters are gaining life, gaining health, and we come to the second checkpoint. Now, here it comes. Check this. Go into your menu, switch all of your party members right now to the back row, hit left on your D-pad, select your characters, and push them to the back section like this. Make sure they go back just a little bit. What's that gonna, what that's going to force them to do is move to a more safe defensive position where they will take less damage, but they'll also inflict less damage, but only with physical attacks. That is the key. The way we're going to be utilizing this is using magic spells and the other special skills that the characters have to offset being in the back row because it won't matter. This is critical. Wait till you see the boss coming up here. If you don't do it, you're almost guaranteed to fail here. Alright, and I believe this is going to be the final fight before we encounter the boss in question that we've been doing some preparations for. So, once again, we have a Pterodactyl Pterodon up there. Do what you gotta do to take him out quickly. Use all of your most powerful attacks and spells. Within reason, of course. Try not to blow all your magic. You're gonna want that very, very shortly here. And it looks like just a couple more basic attacks, and we will be all set to go on to the final section of the Leech River. And we're just waiting for this to wrap up. Just a matter of time right now. Matter of repetition. One more little basic attack, and we will be moving on here. Well, maybe two more basic attacks. I guess Terra had a little pity on him. There we go. Goodbye, Mr. Krabs. And we're moving on. Lots of gold to be spending here in the near future. And, ooh, what's this little octopus here? What is it? Well, that, of course, would be a man or a thing named Ultros. Don't tease the octopus, kids. Oh, we're going to tease them a lot here. We're going to be poking them and jabbing them. And... Anyway, Ultros has 3,000 hit points, and he is definitely weak to most of those magical spells and attacks we mentioned here. So use your most powerful stuff. Fire especially works wonders. That's basically 10% off of his life total right there. The Aura Bolt also works wonders from Saban. Now, as I said, make sure you put all of your characters in the back row before the start of this fight, or you will be in deep, deep... Well, you'll be in something. So we've basically taken about 1,000 HP off of him with only three or four attacks here. That's pretty dang good. Now see, he's using a tentacle attack. Had we not switched our character into the back row, that would have been a one-shot. And again, you cannot let Bannon go down. If he goes down at any point, even if it's for five seconds, the challenge is over, the game is over. So it is critical. Cannot say that enough. Bannon absolutely has to be the healer. Honestly, I would probably have Terra be a healer as well, if you can afford it. Right now, it looks like everyone's doing fairly well on health, so we can afford to have Terra be an attacker. Also, because all of these characters are in the back row, you don't really have to worry about healing that much, right? They're not going to take too much damage, so you can afford to go on an all-out blitz here. Now, there will be an occasion where, I believe it's after 9 or 10 attacks, Ultros will target Bannon with his tentacle. And you're going to see something quite interesting here. It's coming up any moment now. And that's unfortunate. I put the wrong blitz input in and lost out on about three to 400 HP worth of attacking right there. And he hit all of them, and here it is right here. Ooh, <laughs> look at that, down to one HP. Oh my goodness, I thought that was it right there. Thank the Lord he had one HP left, or that would have been 90 minutes down the drain right there. We do survive, we recover, get all of our health back to where it needs to be. Few more shots with the Aura Bolt and the Flame Auto Crossbow, and we should be able to do this one in here. We're just waiting and waiting and waiting and hoping that we can keep Bannon alive here. 166 HP is not a very high total for any point in the game, but especially here. I believe we should be okay. It was just that one single tentacle attack that we had to dodge, and the, 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 that's all, friends. That's pretty much it for now, or is it? So, the friends are gathered on the raft to see if, in fact, that is it. And as we're gonna find out, you something's caught Terra. We all know what that is. So what's gonna happen here? We know he's still out there. And it looks like Saban, being the hothead that he is, is going to try to take him out with a blitz. Let's see what happens. Kinda reminds you of Anakin Skywalker, doesn't it? Well, we're gonna see exactly what happens here. It goes deep in the water, looking for him. Whoa! Gets thrown right out of there. And we don't exactly know what's going on here right now. He just kind of flew up in the air. 
And at this point, take care of yourself. Well, that pretty much tells us that Sabin is going to be floating down the river and we're going to lose contact with him. So he goes a different way. Edgar, Terra, Bannon are going one way. And of course, Locke is going back to Narsh. Or excuse me, back to South Figaro. So at this point in the game, we get to choose between three different scenarios. But which one are we going to choose first? Well, you're going to find that out in part four of our playthrough of Final Fantasy VI. I'll let you ponder that, but we will see you in the next part of this video.